In this lesson, I'm going to explain functional harmony and how knowing about it will allow you to find effective chord substitutions so you can have alternative options for chords when writing or playing any chord progression. This can help us sound a little more fresh and can help prevent the classic problem of trying to write something new and having the results sound like the same old song we've written a million times. I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com and on this channel I help guitarists like you expand your theory knowledge, your technique, and your fretboard mastery so you can reach your creative potential. I have a new lesson video every week, so if you're new here, please subscribe and like and hit the bell. I'm gonna define functional harmony, tell you how to use it to find chord substitutions, and then I'll demonstrate how it all works on a real live song idea. And after that, I'll give you a way to find many other options for chord substitutions beyond this one approach. Functional harmony makes us consider what the purpose is of individual chords. In Western music harmony, there are seven notes in a complete scale, and a chord can be built off of each of those notes. Those chords are labeled one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and they're usually written with Roman numerals, where uppercase Roman numeral means major, and lowercase Roman numeral means minor, and the little circle means diminished. These are the chords that naturally exist in a key. And in traditional functional harmony, there are three different types of functions that any of those seven chords will be used as. The three main functions are tonic, dominant, and subdominant. I've also heard subdominant called predominant, and you'll see why it's also called that in a second. The tonic functions as the home base, or the main arrival point, or a stable area. The dominant functions as something unstable that kind of points to the tonic. It can create tension or momentum that wants to resolve to the tonic zone. The subdominant function is something that simply comes before the dominant, which is why it can also be called predominant. So in functional harmony, each of the seven chords in a key can serve one of these three functions. The tonic functioning chords are one, three, and six. The dominant functioning chords are five and seven. And the subdominant functioning chords are two and four. The six chord can also be used as a subdominant chord depending on how you use it, uh, but it also can be used as a tonic functioning chord, which is why we have it in that category. Of course, even in the official language of functional harmony, there are ways to be flexible with these labels and these categories. You can break the rules, but this is the basic foundation to take into consideration. As far as chord substitutions go, you can already guess that you can replace any chord with another chord that has the same function. This gives us options for a little bit of variety without totally disrupting what the music is supposed to feel like. Now, why does this work? Let's take a look. In my last video, I explained how any triad is the upper three notes of a seventh chord, and that any seventh chord is the upper four notes of a ninth chord. I know that sounds confusing. If you're interested, definitely check that video out. It's pretty cool. The point here is that many chords are kind of piled over each other, sharing several of the same notes. Chords that share two or more of the same notes are more likely to also share the same function. Let's look into that. The one chord, which is called the tonic chord itself, is made up of the notes one, three, and five of the scale. The three chord, which is another tonic functioning chord, is made up of three, five, and seven of the scale. If we look at what notes those two chords share, we see that they do indeed share two of the same notes. The six chord, the other tonic functioning chord, is made of six, one, and three of the scale, and we see that it also has two notes in common with the one chord which is the actual tonic chord. This is why these are the three chords that can function as tonic. How about dominant functioning chords? Well, the five chord, which is called the dominant chord itself, has five, seven, and two in it from the scale. The other dominant functioning chord is the seven chord. Well, the seven chord has seven, two, and four from the scale. That's what makes the seven chord. And yep, we see that those two chords are sharing two of the same notes. As for subdominant functioning chords, the four chord, which is the chord that is called the subdominant in itself as a chord, uh, it, it has the four, the six, and the one from the scale in it, and the two, the other subdominant functioning chord, has two, four, and six, and once again we see that they share two of the same notes. Now it's starting to make sense how these chords might have the same function as each other, and now you can substitute chords that have the same function 
to your heart's content. So let's try this out on a song idea. Here's a really common chord progression. One, six, two, five. Very common. One, six, two, five. So say we're writing a song with this chord progression and say we have a melody that works over it that we like. Here's a little melody that I like that works over this. Let's also write some lyrics, ideally something that everybody can relate to. So let me get into lyric mode here. Lyrics, 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 lyrics. All right, so we have our lyrics. Let's see how they work over the chord progression with the melody. I hate being tired. I hate being tired, but I love sleeping, yeah. Now, say we wanna change up those chords just a little bit, but we can't mess with them too much because we don't want to also change the melody, and that melody works because we wrote it over those chords. So let's substitute some of those chords with chords that share the same function. So the original progression was one, six, two, five, and it repeated one, six, two, five, okay? So let's go ahead and start with one still, okay? And instead of going to six, let's go to three, because that's another tonic functioning chord. So we have one, three, and instead of two, let's replace it with four, since that's the other subdominant functioning chord and then we'll go to five uh, again so the, we'll go one three four five and now instead of repeating since it happens twice let's go ahead and go to six which is which is nice feeling from five uh, and then we'll go to one so we swapped those two since they're both in the tonic functioning category uh, six one um, and then let's go to four again and I'll do maybe four with C in the bass. This is in the key of C, this is an F major chord right now. And then instead of five, we'll use the diminished chord, seven, which is very rare in, a, in like a songwriting context, but it's gonna work quite well. So the old progression is this, happening twice. Now here's our new progression. So let's hear our song idea with the melody and with the lyrics over our new version of the chord progression. And also just to finish the, the idea off, I'm gonna add a little concluding phrase to the song. But you'll hear the part we're talking about and then I'll have this um, added phrase to kind of finish it off that you'll hear. I hate being tired. I hate being tired and I love sleeping. I hate being tired and I love sleeping. To take a nap. I know it doesn't change the sound all that much, but that's exactly the point. The function that each chord was serving for the song doesn't change really even after swapping them out. The song itself still behaves like it did before. We haven't really done anything to actually change the underlying harmonic quality of the functions of the chords and the chord progression. There are, of course, ways to do that, but that wasn't the goal here. It's important to note here that just because this idea of functional harmony exists doesn't mean that every chord all the time is always behaving within this framework. This is a certain type of tonal Western music dialect that really isn't actually used in most popular music today. That being said, seeing how these chords overlap with each other and then using that knowledge to find chord substitutions, no matter what kind of music we are making, I think is really 
fun and interesting and useful. I'll give you a resource for finding other types of chord substitutions in just a second, but first I want to say this. These terms didn't always exist. Someone theorized them into existence. So don't hesitate to be your own theorist and think on your own terms and start to ask yourself, what is the function of any given part of the music that you're making at any time? And I don't just mean chords. I mean also an instrument uh, role that comes in or a lyric or a whole section of a song or, you know, what is the purpose and how is this idea, any aspect of the music at all, how is it serving the ultimate goal of what we're trying to express? Thinking in this way, whether you're using the traditional functional harmony chord substitution stuff we talked about here or not, thinking in terms of what's the function of this, this can really help us think outside of the box and get the results we want but uh, explore new territories at the same time. After understanding these types of chord substitutions using functional harmony, you might wonder, are there other ways to substitute chords as well? And there are indeed many other ways. Another way to substitute chords to find really interesting alternatives for chords that we're already using is simply to take a version of that existing chord and add extensions to it. My free chord chart that I made called Chords with Color shows you all the chords written out in five different keys, and then it shows you all of the alternatives of that chord that can exist with all the possible types of extensions that can be added to it. Just go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color or use the link in the description. It's super cool and I highly recommend playing around with it, especially if you are creative and like to make up your own chord progressions or write songs. Next week's lesson is going to be on chordal harmony. This is a totally unique language for building chords, something that we're not as used to and something that I haven't talked about at all so far in this series. So it's going to be really cool. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care.